Already. Down in the depths of my soul, feeling the loss of control in the spirit, so colorful. Believe it, let's go home to a place where you belong. Give you strength to carry on. Open your heart, set your mind at ease. Live your life and you'll be free. We're gonna. YouTube and welcome to Lord of Tune Review. A uh, bit of a dodgy start to the show. Uh, I've took a tumble down the stairs. I've then smashed my camera. So I'm now having to use my MacBook camera. So I do apologize for the very strange background I've got going on. Um, even lads. Even, even Paul. Paul. Even uh, I do apologize for keeping you guys waiting as well. But uh, hey ho, oh, um, my shoulder's now around my spine. So I may need that looking at after the show. But we'll, we'll see. Um, we may as well get straight into it. Um, today saw the end of these two. Um, confirmed as gone. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Great. Can, never too, can never have too many thieves. That's what I always say. Can never yeah. have too many. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Daz. About fucking time they got rid of them. Jesus. I mean, listen, it's been a it's been a fart on. I've never seen them in training, to be honest. I've never seen them once. Uh, so I don't know whether they've been on gardening leave or you know, just clearing the desks out. I mean, uh, I don't think the training when they were players, mate. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. You, Paul, you know what's interesting about that, and, and boys, you you you'll probably recognise this as well. Is that like, you know, over the last six to eight months, um, Graham Jones has got a lot of shit. He's got a lot of stick um, about the training and all the rest of it. But why are those fuckers not been called out? Oh yeah, fucking Steve. Why have they not been called out about yeah. fucking coaching all the rest of it? They've been there before, fucking Graham Jones. Why is Graham Jones getting it in the fucking neck? And they they weren't. They were fucking dreadful. They were dreadful, <laughs> right? They didn't let, 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 let it out, Pete. Let it all. Out. I've never heard Pete oh, shit. Shit. You know, you know, Rant's finished <laughs> ten minutes ago. Yeah. No, they, they were fucking... <laughs> Oh, fuck off, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with them, actually. I mean, they, they have been absolutely shockingly bad. Um, mm. I'm getting right in the neck in these comments, but you, you can now <laughs> bug off. I've got a dislocated shoulder here, but never mind. Um, good excuse, Mark. It's good excuse. <laughs> so, Eddie Howe has taken over. We've got uh, five days build up to the match. Um, I've seen a lot of sort of tweets and uh, videos going around that many people are looking forward to it and can't wait to the, for the match. Um I gather, are you are you on the bottom? You are both coming up, Chris and Pete. Are you coming up the game? Yeah, mate. We'll have to have a yeah. pint. Yeah, where well, you going to do on Friday, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll see you there because uh, I'm it's going as well. Up. So uh, should be an interesting night. Um, I'm driving though, so uh, I can't. Uh, I won't be hanging around with no stinking hangover the next day. Uh, <laughs> probably back early, but I mean, is the atmosphere going to be the same as the the takeover day? Do you think, or is it just going to be a bit more toned down? Um, I, do you know what, Paul? I think I think it will be as good, um, and hopefully it'll last longer than what the six or seven minutes that it did, because it soon went pretty downhill, didn't it? As soon yeah, as soon as we'd bit, scored yeah. and then we conceded, it just went like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think I think the anticipation, you know, it'll be it'll be pretty pretty high on the day, and um, you know, it is it is officially now the start of the new era, isn't it? With with our new ownership and our new management. So no, I I think I think that uh, I think I think it, you know it should be it should be a really good day. 
I'm hoping I'm hoping we see some good football. And we were just saying, weren't we, Pete, about, um, you know, hopefully we don't see the same formation or the same, you know, five at the back. Oh. And just imagine if we did. <laughs> That's very true. Uh, Daz, you're a cheeky twat. You really are, like, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, you know, slag off me channel yeah, yeah, yeah. and then come onto it. You know what I mean? Well, I, Whatever you want, mate. I didn't realise someone pushed you down the stairs. Boss. Well, I was probably lying at the bottom of the stairs, like twisted yeah. inside out while you were writing that. So I hope you feel bad about it. At, like yeah. a, about five minutes later, we were all moving to Loaded and we were going to bring everyone with us. So yeah. uh, we would have sent you the link. I thought, yeah, yeah, very kind of you. Yeah, I think I think um, we need to check the comments. I think it was three of the horsemen that pushed you down the stairs, was it? <laughs> uh, I did get a text off Buzz actually asking if I was all you right. You got a text. Um, you got a text. Oh, piss off! <laughs> <laughs> Daz, you need to let that go, man. You need to let the, the whole Love Island shit go. I'm starting to think you want to be on it. Anyway, five minutes before you come on the show, it's it lasted this long that that joke. I'm just ignoring that Irish prick. Anyway, anyway, Martin. Um, right, pal. Anyhow. How do you think he's going to do? Is he going to get us out of relegation? Do you think? Do you think he's the right man? I, th- I think he is, and I think he will. Um, I'm, I'm probably more confident. Um, when we, we we kind of did loaded mag there a couple of weeks back, um, myself and Pete were chatting, and I made a comment on the show. I said, I actually don't mind if we go down. It's not mm-hmm. that I want to, but I don't. I'm not worried about it. Yeah, because I think either way will be okay. Like the club from the inside out needs a needs a, a complete U-turn and a complete refit. Um so f- for me, you know, it's a it's it's probably a byproduct if it happens. It happens, but I don't think it will. I think we've seen from the intensity of training you had the lads train at St James's Park yesterday or Saturday, I think it was. Mm. Um, you know, he's he's put in stuff um where you you, you know players when they're tired are not even allowed to sit down on a football. Um so obviously John Joe's got to find somewhere else to sit, which is probably <laughs> yeah. why he's yeah. been tired this week. So yeah, I, I I think he'll do good. I think he'll he'll ramp up the train, and I think he'll put right 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 people in right holes. I, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Fraser start, um, probably yeah. with ASM on one, Fraser the other, and Wilson up front. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if he plays three at the back, um, maybe Lascelles, Fede, and Shah, possibly, yeah. um, maybe a three four two one or something similar. So yeah, I think I think he'll do a good job. I'm I'm pleased with the appointment, mate. If I'm honest, I think. Um, yeah. We the, the other thing for us, we were saying what I was saying was, you know, it would have been great to get Unai Emery, but I think he's he's maybe a two season stroke, three season manager away when we've transformed a few players out and brought a few players in, and you have a bit more of a continental feel to a team, I suppose, oh. as we move on. So yeah, I think Eddie Howe is right man, right time. Um, I think I think Emery bowled at me. I, I generally do. I think he saw where we are. I think Newcastle definitely made contact. They saw where we are, and he's bottled it. But that's just my opinion. I, I, I'm perfectly happy with Eddie Howe. Um, I think he'll. I think he certainly has gone in and uh, kicked some ass already this season. You've seen him in training. Players breathing out their asses constantly. Um, it, it's what we need. Um, Daz, you got any thoughts on what formation he's going to go for Saturday? Uh, formation. I was just kind of reading up about him with his with what he's done previously. And it's this talk of like a four four uh, four four two or. Four four one one kind of system, but it's just going to be interesting. It's it's something different. It was so thick of of the the, the Bruce uh, and and with Graham Jones following on the the same the same tactics really and um, parking the bus um, and against one or the, not against Chelsea but against the other teams we could have had a bit a bit more of a go like uh, Palace and Brighton. We got very lucky, uh, but uh, yeah, no, just just be something different. That's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, I, I, like. Uh, and with all the training they've done, they're actually doing proper training now. So uh, it, it, the fitness levels should gradually improve. So uh, we we should like at the start of the season, we're all saying Newcastle should should uh, should finish mid mid table with with uh, Willock brought in as well. I know we don't have the same <laughs> rich in the form from Willock or the same yeah. kind of form from, uh, but we should be able to be getting back to that kind of uh, standard of a, a mid table team. But we're <laughs> we're playing catch up big time. So. Uh, 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 we just need them and need them to to, to um, get a few points on the board uh, to get it in, into January, and then we can we can add to the squad and yeah. solidify our place in the Premier League. Um, Pete, uh, this man here, uh, Mr. Saint Maximin, uh, he's been missing for me the last couple of games. 
Uh, is there any chance that maybe uh, how gets the best of him, or if so, how does he get the best of? Him? I know the, there's a point um, there, but it, it's a great question, Paul. Um, and I'll be honest with you, um, I, I don't think it's about Eddie Howe. Uh, I think it'll be about Alan St. Maximin. Um, because I, I think you're right. For the last three games, Alan St. Maximin has probably been the, the, the worst player on the pitch uh, in a black and white shirt from what mm-hmm. I've seen. And um, I, I've talked about this before. Um, I think Alan St. Maximin's been unsettled since Steve Bruce has left the club. Um, yeah. Steve Bruce was the only manager that managed to fit him into a tactical setup that allowed him um, to be free and play the football he wanted. He didn't get that under Patrick Vieira. He didn't get that under Lucien Favre at, at Nice. They both couldn't set him into that formation. Vieira uh, effectively then said, we can't fit you in, so you're going to have to leave. Um, he came to us, he's done a job here. If he can't fit into our setup, I, I, I don't see him staying long-term at Newcastle. So I yeah. think it's more down to Alice at Maximum um, and his... Uh, his ability to want to fit into a team and mm-hmm. to do the the other side of uh, of the game. I'm not talking for him to run himself into the ground, cover yeah. 12 kilometres a game. What I'm mm-hmm. talking about is to fit into a tactical setup when you're defending, um, your recovery runs, making sure they're right, making sure that you're doing that sort of job to protect the guys behind you before you then go and do the business going forward. Now, I think under under how we're going to see more attacking play from Alan St. Maximin. He's going to have a more of an emphasis because... Let's face it, Eddie Howe likes to play attacking football and there's no better player than Alice at Maximum to provide attacking football for Newcastle United. But mm. if he doesn't fit into a setup going long term, if we're going to look to push up the league, we need him to fit into a setup. So um, look, I, I called for him to be dropped against Chelsea. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think it, I think that was vindicated because I don't think he played well. I think he was awful. Um, and and we were effectively playing with 10 men at times. So um Let's see what he what he brings in the Brentford game as the training over the last two weeks is going to make a difference. I hope so, because I only want to see the best of Alan Set-Maximum. Um, Chris, what about uh, um, Almiron? A lot's been said. I mean, I've been very critical of him uh, for quite a while now. I just don't think the Premier League is, is his cup of tea. I think it's a very physical league and I don't think he's up to it. Because when he goes away into national duty, he seems to be a completely different player. So is it because he's playing in a different position or is it because, you know, maybe the Premier League is a bit too tough for him? He'd, he'd probably find it easier in another European league. I mean, where do you stand on Almiron? Do you know what, mate? I, I'm probably I'm probably one of uh, Miggy's biggest apologists. Like, for me, I, I just love his work rate. Now, I know that I, I totally take your point saying that, you know, he might not be built for the Premier League. But whenever I see Miggy, all I ever see is effort. And I always see, you know, his endeavour and his fight and his tracking, his running. And I, I do believe that being managed by Steve Bruce for the past however long as it was, two and a half years, I don't think it's been any good for him. Um, I don't think that he's been played in the correct position. I think if you see Miggy Almiron playing under a manager or a coach, you know, who's mm-hmm. going to organise him, show him where he needs to run when he doesn't. I mean, we saw that with Eddie Howe in that first video when Eddie Howe was saying, no, I don't want you to sprint from there to there. I want you to run when you need to run. And I think you, I think the biggest bene- beneficiary of this, you know, new era under Eddie Howe could well be Miggy Almiron because if he if he played under a coach who you know organised the team, knew his tactics and stuff, Miggy Almiron could be fantastic. He 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 is one of those players who I, I always you know make excuses for. I know in front of goal sometimes he he flaps a little bit. I know that sometimes he, he is described as a headless chicken and you do yeah. just see him just running around like a lunatic and he is very yeah. lightweight. But I just think if you channel that, Paul, you you could end up with a really good player. I mean, we'll we'll see that between now and the end of the season. If we don't see improvements from Almiron, you, you might be quite right. It might be time to move him on and maybe yeah. he would be better suited to you know a, a different league in Europe. But I do think that we will, if anything, I would even say this, Paul, it's a, it's a bit of a statement, but he could be the most improved player under Eddie Howe. Yeah. Uh, I, Joe Linton's another one for me. Um, yeah. Martin, I know yeah. you're a big fan of Joe Linton. Um, do, do you think there's any chance for him? Or do you think it's uh, it, it's goodbye? I mean, he seems to be doing a lot of uh, additional work on the training pitch. And Eddie Howe has apparently done quite a bit of work with him and the coaching staff as well. So will we see a different Joe Linton? Because Nagelsmann came out earlier this week and said that uh, we haven't seen the best of Joe Linton and um, there's a lot to come from him. I mean, I can't see it. 
Unless there's another YouTube tape somewhere of six minutes that the club watched when we first signed up. <laughs> um, I'd say, do you know Do you know what it is? He, he, I've read today he's been doing work with the analysts. Um, I know, obviously, yeah. Eddie, uh, part of Eddie's team, they've got these game analysis who look at kind of individual players' games and, you know, go back over it, dissect it, and, you know, do a lot of that. So I think it's interesting that, that Joe Linton has got into that this week. So I think for me, player-wise, it, it shows he's got a desire to want to do well. And I think if he's got yeah. that, then for me, it's a clean slate. Um, I think, you know, apart from Lascelles and Shelby, for me, it's a clean slate for all the players mm-hmm. um, going into that team. But I, th- I think now, you know, now is the time. Th- this season, this is Joe Linton's last. If he doesn't show it this season and he doesn't improve under how, then I think he needs to be moved on. I think Chris is... Chris and Pete are right. I think about Almiron and 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 ASM. I, I think ASM will probably move on in January if he doesn't start to pull the socks up a bit. I don't think. I, I think he's a bit of a lazy player, but yeah. I don't think we can afford to have players that don't work hard because I think otherwise yeah. that team's going to struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, I think with Almiron, he just needs to be twenty yards further up the pitch and given a bit of a free license. Uh, you know, he's not he's not a backtracker. He's been made to play defensively for Bruce. He's not a defensive player. I watched him play for Paraguay there the other the, the the last time. He's playing effectively as a ten or a forward. He's switching out wings. He's coming inside. So either play him in the right place or don't. Same with Fraser. Play people in the right spots. If Eddie Howe can do that and just put right players in the right spots, we probably stand a good chance of picking up points without major changes. Um, in my opinion. So yeah, no, I think look, clean slate for everyone. Let's see what Joel Linton can do. Um, I like the fact that he's been working hard. And doing extras, I think that that shows shows a little bit. I could be proved wrong; it could still be shite. But let's see. <laughs> well, I, I know last week I went on uh, your forum, um, guys, and I spoke to you uh, about John Joe Shelby's uh, free kick. Um, <laughs> fucking hell, man! Fuck now, it, man. I haven't heard Martin and Daz's view on that free kick, and I just sort of wanted to ask you about it. Really, I mean. Would Eddie Howe have done anything, told Shelby anything different, or would Eddie Howe have put maybe Murphy on that free kick and asked him to curl one in and bounce on the six yard line? Because for me, it was a joke. I, I, I mean, I, I know Pete's still very angry about it, obviously, but um, I mean, Daz, what did you think of it? Yeah, I reckon he should have actually passed it back to Darlow. It, it, it might have been as good as, as Anthony as he did try there while he just lob, lob, lob it in and it, yeah, enough, yeah. it was calling yeah. out for it for a shot there where the dunk was in goal like he hadn't t- he didn't get to touch the ball with his hands and he, he could have probably he probably would have headed it clear anyway but just just test him just put it in one of the corners mm-hmm. you know why, why why would you not have a shot it was the last few minutes of the game down to 10 men as well so yeah especially when, especially when it was a slippy surface as well I, yeah i, I can't yeah, believe yeah, it yeah yeah exactly. i mean but um that would would how how would it told him to shoot for sure hmm. um but do you think it's the end of the negativity now we've got any how you know how we we, we, so. pass, we pass across the back five we uh we we always go backwards sean longstaff's first instinct when he gets the ball is to go backwards uh to the defense you know, even when we're a goal or two down, we still do it. Um, yeah. And that's one of the things that kind of excites me about what Eddie Howe's been saying is that he goes out to win games. Um, it's it's going to be interesting because of the players he's got available to him as far as I'm concerned. He's still got Bruce's players till January. But where where is that spark going to come from if we go attacking? I mean, the formation I think you'll go for is probably 4-4-1-1. Four, uh, four, four, one, one. But I'm just trying to work out where people go in that formation and... and where the spark's coming from. Do you think he's going to play Shelby? I, I think he will, because he's, he, to be fair, he's probably the best holder and passer of the ball we've got to physically set something up. But I think if you if you play him, it's who who is that other holding mid, because Shelby wanders. So the, mm-hmm. the problem is, if you play him alongside a Hayden, we get stretched. And I think the big, the biggest thing for me over all the games we played, yes, we're defensively shite and can't hold a line. But the, the the problem with the defense is we get overrun in midfield. So when we do get forward, and we have got players that can get forward and and, and can do damage. Yeah. So I think you know where, where we've gone this season is we we've never really been able to find a balance. We've mm-hmm. either been very good defensively under a, a certain Spanish waiter, or we've been good 
going forward with the players that we've got. We've never found that perfect mix of the two. Mm. So I'm hoping that Hell can kind of get the transitional play working right between attack. I, we've got the players, but I, I would I would be I would be playing the likes of Willock and Almiron 15, 20 yards further up the pitch. I'd be putting one of them in behind Wilson if he's playing that four mm. four four one one. Um, yeah. probably probably Willock um because I think he's got a better finish. Um He's got a better finish on him goals wise than probably Almiron has. Probably more of a level head. Um, you could always switch Almiron to the right with ASM if ASM mm-hmm. wasn't performing from yeah. that perspective. So, I think I think it's just how how we play. I think Shelby Shelby's the best, probably the best ball player. The other one I would be interested to do if you had that 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 holding mid is I probably would put maybe someone like Shar in there. He's not a he's not a direct mid, but he can pass a ball. Uh-huh. And I think if you can get someone to break that ball up and just play five ten yard passes forward, that's all we need. Doesn't need a Hollywood ball every thirty seconds. Just well, we can't it. bring it out in defence at the minute with uh, with Lascelles and Clark. I mean, they they just cannot no, bring no, the ball there's out. There's no no, there's nothing in them. There's, there's no coach in those two boys, unfortunately. No. Um, and, and I think I think that's that's going to be. I mean, there's no certainly no coaching Clark because uh, he, he's just. Not capable of it. Yeah. Uh, Jamal Lascelles is a little bit younger, so he he's what twenty six. So yeah. there's still potentially some some development there with with with, with how uh, with how to be able to work with him. And we've got to remember that uh, at uh, with, with Rafa Benitez, Rafa Benitez was getting Lascelles playing to the point where he was, he was close to an England call up. So mm. there was potential there, and you know Steve Bruce is your manager. You're only going to go one way. We've already seen that, which is backwards. Yeah. So hopefully Eddie Howe can work with it. But the interesting thing will be is that Jamal Lascelles likes to go long very early, and that's not how Eddie Howe plays. So it's it's going to be interesting to see how those two get on in terms of their working together, captain and manager. Um, but. Um, Marty's made a really good point about John Joe Shelby. If you look at the way in which Eddie Howe tends to set up in a team, he likes a deep line midfielder that can play. So he yeah. ended up bringing in Philip Bill- Billing Billy, from yeah. uh, Huddersfield, who, yeah. you know, athletically is not like John Joe Shelby, but mm-hmm. he brought him in because he's very, very comfortable on the ball. Very he's similar player. Yeah. From deep, mm. he likes to spread the play. And he's very, very similar in terms of his passing range. Yeah. His ability to do that. So I think in the early parts, I think you've only used John Joe Shelby. I think Martin's absolutely right for that. But I think long term, he's going to look for a more a more mobile midfielder who's creative on the ball that's going to come in and, and, and play that type of football. Because that's what yeah. we're lacking, really. We've got runners. We've got players with a lot of endeavour in, in Hayden and, and, and Longstaff. But we haven't got the ability, the craft... The, the, the players like Johan Kabai that we had, who was just a magician mm. on the ball, yeah. who was just, you know, he just make things just look so simple. Uh, we, we've missed that. And we need yeah. that on a player. Um, someone, made, someone made a shout, and I'm not sure if it was um, last week or the week before, but someone talked about Mikel Marino coming back. Um, he is exactly yeah. what we need, and I tell you what, he's playing. He's playing in the Spanish squad he, at Real Sociedad. He's tearing it up up there. I mean, we and we let him go for ten million. We could probably get him back for twenty five, and he's still what twenty five years old, maybe twenty six. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, a, a, a no brainer signing in my eyes. Someone to come in with that creative now, so you can also score a goal. Mm. Um, it's funny you mentioned you mentioned him, uh, Pete. It's just uh, I was, I've seen a few uh, um, football manager uh, people, you know, fast forwarding into the the, the, the years. And, uh, and Michael Mourinho is one that comes back to Newcastle in a lot of those kind of games. So <laughs> it's, it's built in. It may happen. It may. You never know. You never know. Uh, Paul says, uh, "Chased down the stairs by a bat." Never heard of the, the end of it. Now I wasn't chased down the stairs by a bat, Paul. Um, I mean, guys, I don't know. You've seen my videos. One night on the Horseman, so some rather large animal came through the window in here. Um, <laughs> it, oh, seriously, and it disappeared within seconds, and I don't know where it went. Um, and from that day on, people do memes of bats flying around my head and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. just don't know. Uh, Julie says, uh, lads, this is so surreal. Love it. Can't wait to catch up on Friday. Uh, yeah, really looking forward to Friday. Yes. Uh, good evening, Danielle. Um, recovered from an illness. Uh, Dave Harrison is recovering, by the way. He's still um, he's still quite poorly, but he's he's feeling better today. Um, so all the best. Get one Dave soon, Dave. And, uh, 
Yep, get well, buddy. Yeah, he's just keeping himself uh, right for, for the weekend, I think. So uh, we'll hopefully see him on Friday. Um, Thomas says, <clears throat> ma- apparently a massive £6.10 appeared in front of Paul, and that's what made them fall down the stairs. I'm never going to live that toll booth down, to be fair. Um, John says, wow, is that the guy off Love Island? Yes, in the middle it is. But does. Seriously. Yeah, I'm okay, Thomas. Don't worry about me. I'll battle on, my friend. I'll battle on. Um, Kieran says, I love how he is them in training at St. James's Park. What did you think about that, um, Martin? You know, going into St. James's Park on Saturday and training. I mean, there was a picture of them coming out the tunnel and they looked sick of their lives. I, th- I think the picture that went up was funny because Longstaff had a face in him to beat the bandwagon. I, 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 I'd say they're just like, e- even the call to probably go in and train on the Saturday when they didn't have a game, they probably never had because they've been used to four or five days a week off under Bruce. <laughs> so I'd say that's a massive change. I, I think it's good. I think for some for some players, you know, at least they're, they're getting to actually run out on the grass, you know, at St. James. Yeah, yeah. Haven't, a lot of them haven't been able to do that under Bruce. Um, but, I, I, you know, I think... I don't think we lose our edge when we're at home, but I think we need to bring back the fortress. Like, you know, a few nice. seasons ago, pre-Bruce, you know, St. Yeah. James has always been, to me, has always been a fortress. We've always, no matter how shit a season we've had, we've always done all right at St. James's. We've <clears> always, <throat> you know, we've always had the 52,000 there. We've always made noise. We've always had the flags. We've always, always done okay. And the yeah. last three, you know, we've been getting beat off fucking Brighton and other players, uh, other teams at St. James's. Yeah. And for me, that has to stop. You know, between the fans and the desire of the team, we'll have to turn, we'll have to turn that castle back into a castle. A new castle. A new castle, yes. A new castle. How is um, Newcastle? I'm, get, I'm getting wrong off Kevin here. Uh, apparently, uh, I haven't introduced you guys properly. Uh, these are the lads from Loaded HQ, which is a fantastic YouTube channel. Uh, the description is down below. Uh, loads of great shows on there, loads of great guests. Um, unfortunately, Daz is one of the presenters, but you have to put up with him. Um, <laughs> he loves me, some, he loves me. Really. <laughs> <laughs> you do get some uh, really good guests on there, really good conversation as well. So please, 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 there's well over 230 on you watching tonight. So please go and subscribe to them um, and uh, help boost their subscriptions as well because uh, you won't regret it. It's a fantastic Newcastle channel. Um, Lisa's a question for all you lads. Uh, are the other teams lower in the league worried with our takeover uh, and management appointment with the raft of manager changes which have happened? A good question. Mm. Good question. Uh, Chris, you can, you can go for that one first. Yeah, do you know what? Um, it's a great question from Lee, actually. Yeah, we, we were talking about this not so long ago and somebody asked a similar question. And yeah, I, I do firmly believe that that is why we've seen like a cull in managers recently because I think it has created a bit of unrest amongst the other, you know, the other sides. Not just the top six, but the teams that are like only just above us. So the likes of like, you know, your Aston Villas, um, you know, we've we've seen them make a manager change. Norwich, who were just below us, which I think was probably the oddest one for me. Like I still can't get my head around mm. why why they got rid of him when he's Daniel Farke is probably the best person to get them out of the out of the predicament that they're in. Um, and then, you know, they've, they've gone and brought Dean Smith on, uh, who also I think is equally odds that he's took the job because he's come from an Aston Villa squad to now a Norwich squad, knowing full well that there's a, a bloody good chance that they're going to go down. So, yeah, uh, to answer Lee's question, I think I think that... I think that the takeover has influenced other clubs around us because they know that come January we're gonna our squad is gonna look a, a lot different because yeah. even if we only make three or four signings, I think they're gonna be three or four pretty strong signings, and it mm-hmm. wouldn't surprise me if we went to the other clubs around us and potentially nicked one or two of the players, which would be nice. Interesting. We get uh, opposition. Yeah, you know, it's just dropped the comment saying, "Guys, the link to this program unloaded is not working, and there are a few people over there waiting for it to start." Um, it's not on Loaded. That's, <laughs> it's not yeah, even no, on that channel. Th- th- there, there is a link to Loaded, uh, we'll load it, load but that's for next week. It's for the well, 22nd. You <laughs> You'll have a long wait, guys, if you're waiting for next week's show. <laughs> Come over here. Come over here. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with being here. Paul, Paul, there's nothing wrong with being early. Uh, you should try it sometime. Oh, look at him. How are you going to get five digs in there? Yeah, the gloves are off. Yeah, well, it's true. Taking everyone down this week. 
<laughs> Jimmy says the loaded lads left to right, top to bottom. Does Martin, Pete, and Chris? He sells Avon, by the way. What's all that? Ah, uh, you know what? No, I, d- I don't sell it. This started, didn't it? Who even started it? Was it Richie or Martin? No, I think it was Martin, wasn't it? I don't Martin. even know why I'm questioning that. It was Martin. So Mar- I was I was off on a show one night, Paul, and Martin said, "Oh, Chris can't make it because he's selling Avon." And then for some reason, it's just stuck. So now everyone uh-huh. thinks I sell Avon, and I don't. I yeah, just to be clear. Yeah, but I mean, most times when we get on a show, you're just literally changing over the laptop and you're like, oh, lads have been on the laptop all night. That's because you've been working out your fucking commission from your day job. That's why. <laughs> you've been on there, right? I've sold, I've told, I've told 10 lip glosses. I've been, I've been knocking the doors around Bootle, selling, selling, it, selling me shit. I hope it's selling not, it. uh, I hope it's not clean easy. It best be Avon. Um, Kieran says, uh, imagine an info maximum that can get passes and shots on target. Uh, ASM wasn't getting the right service to be fair. Well, I don't know, but he did. He, he tends to do a lot by himself, and yeah. I can't see it anyway. I want to talk to you guys about um, the trolling right, that's been going on. Um, obviously, we've seen it in the Daily Mail um, with regards to Amanda. Uh, we see it on Twitter every single <clears throat> goddamn day of the week. Um, I've been subject to it again tonight. Um, it just seems to be a never ending bog roll of trolls um now this happens between sort of people that claim to be newcastle united fans um which i don't understand how they do claim to be that um the daily mail sort of going on about you know body shaming and all that kind of stuff in an age we're living in trying to get rid of homophobia racism and then they go and print something like that um it isn't exactly leading by example but to be honest the daily mail don't really have a good reputation that i mean What's your thoughts on it, Pete? I think it's an absolute disgrace um, that a tab- tabloid new- newspaper can print something like that and not be called out for it. Um, I tell you what, if it, if if it was if it was any other club or any other situation, I tell you what, they'd be going mad about it. They'd, it'd be all over the news. Um, I, I I think at the moment, and and it's not right and it's not okay. That we're seen as a bit of a free hit at the moment because of because of the takeover, um, and because of the human rights stuff. I think yeah, um, the media at the moment sees us as a bit of a free hit that they can say and do what they want, and it's not okay. It is not okay because at any other time, at any other club, that would have been major major talk and major issues, and the mail would have been called out for for their for their chosen behaviour, and certainly. Mm-hmm whoever it was that printed it. I don't know who, who printed it, but uh, they would have certainly been called out for it or certainly been given some sort of warning about their, their behaviour. A little bit like Miguel Delaney was uh, early on when he really kind of uh, zoned in on Newcastle and was quite disrespectful yeah. in some of the comments that he made and he quickly disappeared after um, his newspaper that he represents had, had, had given yeah. him you know a bit of a warning about his behaviour. The same should have happened here. And I, I don't believe it has happened it please correct me if i'm wrong but i think it's absolutely disrespectful um the way they've they, they've treated our our owner and, and thought it was okay to do that um when is it going to stop is the question I'm, I, I'm i'm putting out there to everyone you know when is it going to stop when 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 are these people going to be kind of reprimanded for their for their behavior um because it, it, it's not right you know, you know, we can go on to people within the Newcastle circuit, the NUFC circuit, fans, and I'm sure we'll talk about it in a second, that have been, um, you know, trolled and really, really disrespected recently. It's not It's not on. It's not on. This is not what football is about. It's about coming together. It's about being able to share opinions, whether we agree or not, and, and being, uh, you know, being able to be respectful about it and do it in a respectful way. People in the media might not be happy with the fact that we've got our takeover, but there's no need to point fingers and, and, and make jokes of people and their appearances just because you don't like the fact that we've been taken over by um, the, um, a Saudi Arabian PIF. There's, there's, it doesn't. It's not okay to take the mic and to point fingers at a fan um, from from Saudi Arabia that's committed eighteen months of his life, um, that's lived and breathed Newcastle United as much as mm-hmm. we have for those eighteen months. Uh, to point the finger at him, uh, uh, you know, in in a disrespectful way, it, that's not okay either. You know, we need to be more respectful uh, as fans within our own fan base. 
and the media need to be more respectful to the fans of this game because as we've seen over the last two years with COVID, the fans make football. It's as simple as that. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, it, the thing is, I mean, it, you kind of expect to be trolled sometimes. You know, there's people out there who don't really have any lives um, as far as I'm concerned and they, they want to make life very difficult. Um, you know, I, I was called a disabled spastic at the weekend for, you know, crazy reasons um, because somebody didn't like me um, speaking up. Um, you know, the video I did at the weekend was about um, tr- <clears throat> basically online abuse, women's rights, all that kind of thing, um, body shaming. And, um, you know, a, a certain young woman who is well known to all of us decided to comment um, and say why I was um, looking angry and I was spitting all the time when I was talking and stuff like that. Um, when that individual knows damn well that I have Parkinson's and knows that damn well sometimes um, speech gets affected by that. Um, I do the best I can with a disability that I have no choice but to live with, um, as many, many thousands of people out there do. Um, now, what I've been disappointed tonight, Holly Blades' dad has been getting it, um, you know, for, for, for no reason at all. Um, Holly's been getting it herself, a 16-year-old bullied by adults, which is just unbelievable. Um and I just think, you know, when this takeover <clears throat> happened, there was a massive euphoria amongst the fan base and it all seemed to stop the troll and everyone was getting sort of so much more positive. Um, and I guess I guess what I'm saying is how do we as podcasters or people on Twitter, how, how do we try and convert that into a positive when people are, are still like that online? I mean, Martin, what's your thoughts on it? I, I think the simple answer, Paul, is you can't. I think these yeah. people live for nothing better than to just keep doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if you look at if you look at Twitter as it stands this evening, it's from a few. It's back to where it was. Yeah. You know that euphoria in in I think in some in on some accounts and some areas is still there. But I seen you know the same again with some of the comments about certain things that have gone on, certain mm-hmm. accounts that may or may not be false or not false. I've seen I've seen other channels get involved in comments. I've seen other people on tweets get involved. Uh, me personally, I don't pay that much attention to it. I don't really comment on it unless someone has a direct pop at me, and then I'm much like you, Paul. I'll I'll fucking fire back the same as anyone does. I've noticed um, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I have I have my own views on stuff. I don't. I tend not to get into it for the political side. I'm more into it for the football. I like it yeah. if, if there's a bit of banter. And, you know, there's a bit of trolling going on. Listen, everybody knows I had a bit of a ding-dong with one certain troller. Um, but the fact that I was putting just so many simple answers up and he was getting more and more annoyed, I kind of found it funny. So it was like I had nothing better to do that night either. So it was just for me, it was a bit of fun um, because, you know, it is what it is. But I think when it does, when it's when it becomes, you know, targeted abuse, that's different to somebody having a disagreement. And listen, at the end of the day, we will never all agree on a certain subject, a certain person, a certain account, a certain YouTube. But for me, it's dead easy. If you don't like what we do on Loaded, don't subscribe, don't watch us. If you don't like what you do on Toon Review, don't subscribe, don't watch it. If you don't like the accounts, don't follow, block us. Dead simple. And I do that with anybody I don't enjoy following or I see something on their account I don't agree with. Don't get into a raging with them or start yeah. poking them with a stick. You know, there's no point. All I do is I just block and move on, report it if I need to. But mm-hmm. it's it. I, I think no matter if we if we went on in two seasons' time and won the Premier League, and somebody made a comment, there'd still be an account somewhere that went, yeah. yeah but last year you said, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, it's it's Martin. And, uh, it's because pe- people are bored. People they're like yeah. they're they're bored and they, they find this as a, an avenue of to try and pass time or something. I don't. I don't but know. The thing the thing with uh, Twitter think, is it's get, like, a ho- get a hobby. Yeah, yeah, I think the thing with Twitter as well, and Paul made the point about you know some of the some of the press that's gone on about Amanda and things. You know, your your man that wrote that piece and put the put the picture up of you know Amanda and a certain character from the Wizard of Oz, mm-hmm. also put a tweet up over a year ago about something else that he forgot completely about. Now, listen, Newcastle fans, being Newcastle fans, they'll they're, they're are lads that will go and will dig and dig and dig, and something will always come up. So what I what I've learned is that, you know, there's no hiding ground in Twitter. And if you put something up, you might think it's gone. You might delete it. 
but I guarantee you it's fucking not. Someone's got a hold of it somewhere. Mm. So, you know, I think you just, you just got to keep it kind of lighthearted. It, it's it's a shame that people get it and um, people like yourself and everything else. But uh, look, <clears throat> they're fucking idiots. Let them get on with it. I mean, I've involved the police with mine. I mean, it's ongoing with them. You know, I've, I've just passed everything on to them as yeah. soon as they get it. it's And it's a shame. Um, it's a shame, Paul, that it should get to that, that you should even have to get to that level of it. I know. Um, yeah. It's ridiculous. But look, let them crack on, uh, you know. That's that's my view. Yeah. Uh, let's, have a, let's get back to football anyway. Um, <laughs> question for you guys. What do you think of Mitrovic? 23 games, 22... Uh, 23 games, 22 games, five... I think it's meant to say 22 goals, five assists. He's he's absolutely hammering it in, but has has Mitrovic found his level in the championship? Because Or yeah. has he has he matured? Is he a better player now than what he was at Newcastle? I'd say he's still a mad I, I watched him last night. He was. He went back out after the final. I've he was doing that, yeah. drums and singing and all <laughs> kinds of stuff. So I'd, I'd say he's still as mad as a box of fucking frogs. Me personally, yeah. <laughs> but you know, he's probably the kind of passion you could do with. Is he a Premier League player? Probably not. I think Championships probably his level. That's that. That would be my view. But he's the kind of passion you want at times. Mm. Yeah, that's, that that is a little bit mad. That you know gives a kick when it's needed. And you know, I think if we'd have had that maybe. Last season and early part of this season it might not have been a bad thing, but yeah, yeah, he's geez, he's a crazy bollocks. Yeah, he'll come back to the Premier League again and he he won't do as well, obviously, in the Premier League. Uh, so yeah, I think is it, the championship is, is his level or maybe some, some more foreign as well. It's more in Europe, yeah. It'll be interesting to see. I mean, if Fulham do come up this season, I'm, I'm interested to see how he does, but I, I agree with Martin, he's still crazy. I mean, he was bouncing around that. <laughs> He came out the tunnel after the game to go and see the Serbia fans. He was in a pair of sandals in his pants, and it just <laughs> yeah. it, it jumping class. around like some absolute nutcase. And I mean, you can't take away his uh, his you know passion, his passion yeah. or anything yeah. like that. He's just he's just exactly. full of it. it, yeah. it the other funny. the other one I was laughing at was Jesus Christ. Yeah. So just in case anyone isn't watching, it's now England ten, San Marino nil. <laughs> It's 10-0. 10 nil. 10 nil, yeah. Come on, San Marino, get Zach, one. Zach has yeah. just scored, yeah. Abraham's but um, there's, a, there's also, a, um, there's also a, cl a clip of a load of Serbian fans outside after the game, um, outside the Portuguese hotel, the team hotel, and they're all running up to the door and then turn their backs and they're all doing the Ronaldo. Soo! Oh, and I think I've seen that clip of that, yeah. 200 of them doing it outside the hotel, running they back did it forth, once, across the courtyard. Yeah, oh, that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Kieran says, have you heard Eddie put in Joe White in the first team trainer because Rangers and Celtic want him? Apparently he's a good young player. I haven't seen much of him, to be honest, Joe White. I've heard of him. Paul. Is that the lad with the blondy hair? We, everyone's been yeah. called him Eminem. Uh, Paul, we, 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 I don't know if you remember, but we, we, all, we were at Burton away um, yeah. uh, at, at the same game. Yeah. And he, he came on a, a sub probably about 70 minutes or so in the game. Right. And I don't know about well, you, you might not remember, but I was actually I was actually quite impressed with him when he came on as a sub. Um, I thought his work rate, I thought his ability to press high, I thought he was good on the ball. Um, he had he had one or two chances, I think one from the edge of the area that got deflected. I think they got saved off the line. Um, I thought he played well, and I think you that I think after that game that that's why he's been around in and around the first team training at the back yeah. of that. So you know, there's clearly some potential there. And he, he seems to be doing all right at under 23s. Um, whether he's going to be capable of, of, of making a step up and moving to the next level, yeah. um, who knows? But, you know, I, I, I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world if we were, if we were able to negotiate a new contract with him and with, with the potential to then give him a couple of loans He's still a relatively young lad. Give him a couple of loans. Do what we didn't do with Matty Longstaff. Give him a couple of loans at a younger age. Get him the football at, at first team level and give, mm -hmm. him, give him the opportunity to develop and then with the potential to bring him back. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'm, 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 I'm sort of, I'm not against him getting a new contract. I'd be, I'd be disappointed if someone like that would, uh, would just walk yeah. away from the club quite easily. Yeah, it'd be interesting to monitor, see how he does in the future. I mean, he's a, he's a he's obviously a talent. If Eddie Howe's brought him in, then he wants to see more of him. And but I think you're right. I think you know, look what's happened to poor Matty. You know, yeah. sent off to Aberdeen, yeah. and he's not doing it there. Apparently, he's not having a good time. So uh, it'd be interesting. Uh, John, I think, thanks I very much. For the... Yeah, Go I on, think Chris. that's a massive piece as well, though, Paul. The Pete raises, which is 
the whole academy under 23s yeah. under 21s 19s all that level's got to be sorted out and the whole yeah, yeah. way that the club deals with loan and players out for their development has to be restructured because it's mm -hmm. more you know, yeah we, more. we, we can't it's, lose it's, another it's, it doesn't even car. exist like like, like more. I, i'm sorry right but show Ramiobi for him being a, a club legend and we, we love him he should not be in that role anymore no absolutely his, his choices of loans has been an absolute disgrace mm -hmm. he has he has he has ruined the potential of players in the academy by yeah. the choices he's made of going on loan um just look at Sorensen for example Sorensen yeah, was smashing amazing. goals in for fun at under 23s had mm -hmm. the potential of breaking through the first team he went on loan to was it Carlisle and, and Blackpool yeah. barely yeah. got a kick at those get it those grounds we're a Premier League club we should be saying to the teams that we're that they're going on loan to if you're going to take this guy this guy plays every game when we get a loan player from whether it's one of the top six clubs or a team in Europe, they tell us, for example, um, oh, um, Danny, Danny Rose, for example. Let's say Danny Rose at Tottenham. Right, he comes on loan. He's on loan with, with the with the with the agreement that he plays pretty much every game. That he has to play every game. Right, uh, and and he pretty much does for the remainder of that season. Uh, I think he he gets rested for one, but plays the rest of them. Why is it that, that we can't send our loan players out with the agreement that they play every game, that they are given the opportunity to actually develop their skills? Like our, our players at our academy shouldn't shouldn't be coming back um, uh, from a loan early because they're not getting game time. Yeah, Matty Longstaff should be going. I'm sorry, Matty Longstaff scored goals and had good games at Premier League level. He scored mm -hmm. against Man United he, yeah. twice. You know, he's had good games when he's played in and around that. He should be going to Aberdeen, and starting every game. He should be playing it alongside Brown in that midfield and and and, and commanding that midfield alongside the experience that that, that he has next to him, not sitting mm -hmm. on the bench. I just think, I well, just think, uh, I just think, Shoda Amiobi has made some horrible, horrible loan decisions. Yeah. I tell you, I tell you what, our loan, what our loan deal piece has been, Pete, in the Mike Ashley era, is getting wages covered. Yeah, that's all it's yeah. been about. It's been about getting money off the books, getting a kid to sit in the bench. I mean, if you're any kind of a kid wanting to play a game, get into a black and white shirt, and you go to a club, and all you're getting is sitting on a bench. Mm -hmm. No wonder you want to leave. And for Ashley and the rest of them, it was it, purely for me. It was just about getting money and wages off the book for a season. Yeah, I hope that uh, that's all going to change. I mean, it, it has to. Matthew says Math uh, Jamal Lewis is looking good for Northern Ireland tonight. Um, yeah. Julie says uh, the rapport between you guys is spot on. The show is going to be epic. Uh, she likes her big words, does Julie? Um, <laughs> Daniel says she loves the quizzes as well, does Julie? Yeah, she does. Um, which will be coming. Will be coming on these shows once you know. Once we get, I mean, I had a full script tonight. I had a, it, bullet points and everything. I did my homework this afternoon, um, but that's currently at the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> <'Cause> I, yeah, <laughs> that's where I leave mine, mate. I wouldn't worry about uh, it. Well, yeah, but it wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah, uh, it went down. You're under the stairs. The stairs. <laughs> no, I just you know, I borrowed the Ben's big. A4 notebook. I, I, I sat this afternoon and I did my video and See, then I did some that, bullet points. That's, where, that's where you're going wrong, mate. Just get an etch a sketch. That's all I use. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I'm, I'm, I probably will from now on, but the problem is that's still at the bottom of the stairs because I knew I was late and I thought <laughs> I was going to have to run. Just your hallway is covered in sand now. <laughs> yeah, and then I knocked my camera all over the place, so it's still at the bottom of the stairs. So, you know, it will be more structured in future weeks, I have no doubt, but uh, obviously, you know. We had to put some sort of shoe on because I, I didn't want people thinking <laughs> I, I died or anything, you know. So, um, <laughs> never mind. Um, one thing that did come out today, and I wanted to ask you is, is about um, the Sports Direct signs um, that are currently up. Um, now, it, it's come out that um, Mike Ashley charged his own company 157 grand. That's all for the for all those signs around St James's Park. I mean, I, I, Chris, I find that staggering. I mean, considering yeah. what all other clubs get for sponsorship, he only took 157k off Sports Direct for those signs. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? I mean, and you know, when you think about it, Paul, you could literally walk five, ten meters in the stadium, and you'd find the Sports Direct sign. Yeah, it, it they're absolutely everywhere. So he's absolutely vinced us in that sense, hasn't he? And I was talking to Pete about this earlier, and we were saying, you know, 
we're now getting you know bans put on us for future sponsorship deals and stuff like that and it makes you think well hang on for 14 years we've had this shite agreements with mike ashley we've been getting absolutely rinsed not getting the true market value that we deserve and then as soon as we're now in a position where we could potentially get strike up a really good deal with a company you know, we're getting criticised for it. And you think, well, hang on, what about all those years where we've been getting... Well, the latest figure was 157. Imagine what it was six years ago. but it wasn't that. But it was even cheaper uh, than that. I mean, you know, the, the fact is, other Premier League clubs will be getting millions, yeah. millions, literally yeah. millions for, for, for sort of signs around the ground. But that's, when you think of... That's 2 million over 14 years, even at 157k. I mean... 3,000 a week or something like that, yeah. I mean, that... that if that doesn't prove that Mike Ashley was using this club as a cash cow, nothing else will. Because he had no interest in the football club. All he had interest in was his external businesses. And that's the way it's gone. And, and now it's all coming out that he, you know, he hardly charged his company. We've got staff coming out saying how bad it was to work for the club. That the, the work that their asses off Monday to Friday were never offered tickets to watch the game. We're never given the opportunity to get the tickets first. I mean, it, it, it's all coming out how bad that club was, does. Yeah, and well, it's no surprise, Paul. You know, we 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 all knew we could see from the outside that how, how bad it was. We we endured it, but yeah, for working for him, yeah. Um, but look at that's in the past. We'll move on. There's better things to come. You know, it, it will take time, bit by bit. Where it, I thought it was it wasn't going to be the, towards the end of the month. We we might see a, a Saudi sponsor in and all those signs replaced. So. Hopefully that 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 uh, happens. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a bit uh, it's a, a project. It's a bit by bit we'll we'll get there, and uh, we just need to stay up this this year, and then we're laughing. Uh, well, we'll see what happens with them. I just hope they come down shortly because I'm sick of seeing them. You know, it'd just be nice to have fresh advertising boards around the ground or on the top of the stands or whatever it may be. Uh, did Kane get five goals tonight? Uh, I'm not sure how many he has. Sack has got one. Smith Rose got one. Abraham got one. I think he got four. <clears throat> he got four. Yeah, he was four. He's off there now. So he's, put, he's been substituted. Supermax joint England goal scoring record for most goals scored in one game is safe. He All passed. Right, okay. uh, he passed. Um, he's equal he's with Lineker, though on 48 goals. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it, it'd be very interesting to see if he starts firing for Tottenham. Uh, he'll want a new uh, move to Newcastle in the summer, no doubt, as long as we're still in the Premier League. Um, just trying to find some questions here, see if there's any... What's John saying here? Just think, we might have had Rafa back, or we could have had a complete change in direction. I, Eddie Howard, a fantastic appointment. The only person to talk like him is Kevin Keegan. Does he remind you a bit of Keegan? I think the clip of him on the train and pitch the other day when he was running, he was exchanging passes with John Joe, um, and he was kind of sprinting around the around the wing and around the poles, kind of. <laughs> see, yeah, see. That I've just right. seen it's that going. comment from Rachel. <laughs> I just... See, can't get away from it, Chris. It's oh, all Dan it's Danielle all commented earlier. Danielle commented earlier that you've got some Christmas deals going on, Chris. So we'll have to. <laughs> Um, you know, I'll have to get some info he for you. He's, 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 yeah. he's available in the Liverpool it is area to fill, to fill um, any lady stockings. It's absolutely <laughs> petrifying how like everyone's dead serious about it, and I'm just like laughing. At some point, you're going to go into a pub or somewhere, and you're going to yeah. be with the missus and the kids, and someone's going to go, "Have you got any gear in your car?" And it's going to be taken completely <laughs> out of context. <laughs> yeah, and you're, you're going to get buzzed. Uh, Jesuit <laughs> just commented there, saying to, to Julie that she's just started something on this channel with the Avon comment. Uh, you know, nothing ever goes away on this channel. Uh, no, it doesn't. I mean, obviously, uh, John Sinclair made a comment about uh, his old mate Joe Linton that never ever went away. Uh, and now we've got Chris with his Avon, so um, I think you'll have to change your Twitter handle to Chris Avon. I mean, I've got to do something expanded, like Chris. Yeah, expand. Like. <laughs> yeah. To hire more people now. I'm just waiting for Avon to reach out. I mean, that, that'll be the ultimate goal, wouldn't it? If, if, well, if I can Avon just see it. Lord of the HQ sponsored by Avon. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's going. It you, is. you just know it is. Um, <laughs> Sean says uh, Almiron has been doing the chasing down work for three unfit players. Let him play in the number 10 role uh, and you will see a better player. <clears throat> is yep. he a number 10, though? Because he plays he plays left for Paraguay. So He switches, though. He, he switches. True, so you, yeah. He was on the right second half. But he, he, nine times out of ten, he starts centrally, just behind. Normally, they've got—I don't know what his name is. 
they've got a quite a big number nine that plays kind of up front centrally. And they've got another three or four that kind of join in that play. But Almiron plays, tends to play just behind. If not, he switches left to right. But it's pretty much a free role. I would say he's given pretty much a free role for, when, for them. When we signed him from uh, Atlanta United, um, he, he, he made his name. And the reason why we tracked him is because he played as a number 10. So he played yeah. he played just behind Martinez. Yeah, uh, so Jeff okay. Martinez, who, who okay. he's a, yeah, he he did, did, the old, yeah. did the old celebration, but who, who's actually a terrific striker. And and I wouldn't I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind him coming to the yeah. cast I've said that before, yeah. Link, link um, them up again. Definitely. So mm. he, he 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 was he was renowned and, and, and scouted as a number 10. But but Martin's right, what he does tend to do is drift off off to the left. Um, the only thing I've, I'm frustrated about with with Almiron is his ability to to shoot and his ability to cross the ball. He gets he gets so many opportunities on the left hand side where he picks up the ball in decent positions and he could just whip a ball into the box. But he chooses he chooses to play the, the easy sideways <coughs> sideways or backwards pass. He just wow. needs to be more direct with his play. But maybe maybe yeah. that's because of the manager. Maybe wow. anyhow we'll get the best out of him. Who knows? But. Uh, Chris was right in what he said earlier. There's massive potential in that uh, in yeah. Um, yeah, and, um, um, and, and you know what? If we don't if we don't maximise that potential, someone else will. Um, yeah. he, 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 you know, he he will no doubt go to Spain if if he doesn't yeah. make it work here. Yeah, um, yeah. and and he'll be very successful over there. Um, without a doubt. massive so, six months from uh, Pete. It is. Yeah. It's a huge yeah, six yeah, months from. I think it, it, because. If he can't perform under Eddie Howe, then he's not going to perform under anybody in the in the Premier League. And I think, is it, you know, for his own sake, I think moving somewhere like I don't know Germany, um, Spain, maybe Spain might be good enough for him. I don't know. Um, we'll stay on for about five more, ten more minutes. Just I know I was late, and I know Chris is absolutely knackered because he's been streaming. Um, well, Pete has as well. To be honest, since uh, around about quarter to seven, so uh, I know you have been on a while tonight. Um, it has been a bit of a mixed bag of a short night, and uh, you know, as I say, I do apologise for that. But uh, Loved it, out of Loved my hands, it. Yeah. Um, but it, it's going to get better because I am planning on doing competitions and stuff as well with you guys, which should be a good laugh as well, um, and involving everybody else, and hopefully have some prizes and stuff and as can, well. Can as we win? Uh, absolutely not. The others can. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but we'll see. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I've got a, I've got a, a little sort of. Blankety blank thing in mind, which you know goes well considering we've got Rose here, but we'll try and involve the viewers as well. So, um, obviously, Newcastle United related. Um, but uh, Rob's come in and said, uh, uh, My girlfriend found lipstick in my jacket pocket. I told her straight up I was cheating. There's no way I was going to confess that I sell Avon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, Chris, you're going to get it now. I mean, you really are. Uh, That's I, I it, now, think, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> A lot of people saying that they submitted a complaint uh, to the ISPO. I actually made a complaint to Twitter and I got a reply tonight off them. Um, and they said they couldn't find any violation and um, nothing happened, which is which is the usual kind of, I think... A lot nothing of to see do, here, lads. Move on. Yeah, that's all they get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah perfect. Um, let's have a look. Is it true that Chris Hall likes to fall out with people so they can make up? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Loving that. Yeah, oh, no. Uh, yeah no. Yeah, no. Uh, oh, God, that's going to stick with you on this show. Now, even next week on your channel, it'll just it'll stick like glue now, without a shadow of a doubt. I'm just trying to find any more. Um, Daniel's yeah, on about trolling. Belters, yeah. Trolling won't stop as long as regulation in social media is not in place. It won't stop until a tragedy happens. Yep, that's normally what happens. Yeah. Um, Great point, Daniel. Let's have a look. What happens without fans? Football is zero. Um, yeah, really. I'm trying to find some football ones because there's so much conversation going on in the chat. It's it's mental. Um, it's done on the new bond. I think I think there was Irish Tune came up with a good question. <laughs> um, uh, Irish Tune came up with a good question. I have to go back to it. Um, I'm not sure if he he, he mentioned something about Dwight Gale. Uh, right. Oh, um, on the on your show tonight. No, no, no! It's on your, it's on your channel. Oh, was it? I, I just saw it a, a while. Back. I know Dwight Gale got a mention on your show earlier on. I was. Could um, have disappeared. Yeah. Could have disappeared. Yeah. 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 No, um, yeah Twitter. Yeah. Streamyard's been weird recently. Yeah. What was it? Been deleted now. Recently, um, Streamyard. It, it, it's mental for deleting. 
you, you hit the bottom of the comments and then you, you lose a hundred of them and they disappear. That's because that, you get too many put comments. Happens regularly, yeah. An Irish Toon Army is, is put <clears throat> what what about the Ake rumours, the Nathan Ake rumours? So oh, obviously not for me. Um, right. previously linked with uh linked up with Eddie Howe at Bournemouth, not getting a game at Man City. What yeah, Paul, we're gonna ask you, I'll ask you the question because you know, <laughs> oh, no. the questions all that. What do you think about Nathan Ake potentially being a signing for us come January? No, 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 no. Why? I mean, have you seen him play for Man City since he went there? He's 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 absolutely he's all over the place. He um, kicked the ball, man. Well, uh, look, I'm getting told off on my own bloody he's show. He's probably <laughs> <listen. laughs> yeah. What was Martin saying before about opinions, Peter? <laughs> he's only played like games on one hand. I know, but listen, if, if you were to if you were to compare the likes of you know, everybody knows I'm a big fan of Connor Cody, right? And I think yeah. Connor Cody is is ten times the player Nathan Ake is. And I actually think we could get Cody for the same price as Nathan Ake, because I don't think Man City, um, if we went in for Ake, are gonna turn around and give us some at face value. Um, I think we're gonna have a lot of problems when we go into the the British transfer market simply because everybody knows how much money we have and they'll be sticking millions on the end of their price tag. Um, I've no doubt that that's going to happen. But if we were to go for a centre-back, mine would be Conor Cody all day long. Absolutely all day long. Um, I mean, is Ake better than what we've got? Uh, I think he's better than Lascelles. I certainly think, is he better than Fernandez and and Shah? I'm not sure. I would, I would say so. Right. So I'm clearly outvoted here, by the way. I'd just like to point that out. <laughs> Massively outvoted. We're, si- we're signing an Aki. We're signing an Aki. One, yeah. of the keys, one of the keys is he's a ball-playing centre-back, which is what um, Eddie Howe likes. He and left footed Pete. And left footed as well. He, he likes he likes his play. He likes we his need a couple of ball players with a bit of ball athleticism. Out. Yeah. That well, can get back on I those can, recovery runs. Could, Listen, Cody could alongside Aki, I can live with that. I can live yeah, with that all day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, he's going to look better when he's playing for Bournemouth than when he's playing for for City as well. Like, because he, you know, um, just just is he he stand out more. I think I, was, I think I he's was ended up the team as well. He went there. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Paul. I was just saying. I think because he's been in and out the team as well. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, Pep, yeah. we know he loves to rotate. And I think at Bournemouth, uh, Ake was given. You know, he was he was a starter, wasn't he? He was first team. And mm-hmm. I think if he had won a game, you could you could start to see. You know. Um, more consistency. I mean, John Stones has the same issue. John Stones will play eight, nine, ten great games for City. Then he's dropped and he comes back in. He's always a bit rusty and he's always got a mistake in him. And I do think that's because he's the kind of player that just needs that run of games. Um, yeah. I, I take your point, Paul. I, I'm not saying Aki is a world beater, but I do I do think he's an upgrade on what, on what we've got now. But it, yeah, obviously I suppose as well, if you look at it that way, it, yeah, an upgrade on what we've got now, I'd agree 100%. Um, but he wouldn't be my first choice to go for. I think um, I think Cody, because of his leadership skills as well, I think I think he's a ready-made captain just to come straight in, um, and he would demand respect. You know, he's he's clearly got that from the Wolves uh, squad. You can see that when you watch, you know, videos and stuff like that. You, you know, I watched the daft one when they were doing the they were revealing the FIFA ratings and stuff like that at the start of the season, and um, you can just see when he walked in the room, he was getting respect, and 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 but he's also a good laugh. He likes to have a laugh with the lads. But I was watching, I think it was the last time Wolves played uh, when they were live. And before he was, he, he, I think the left back gave him the ball. But as the ball was coming to him, he was clapping the left back for doing the right thing. And then he passed the ball on and he was starting to shout at his midfielders as well. Now, when, have you, when do you ever see Lascelles doing that? You know, when they go a goal down, he's like g in them up. Lascelles just walks with his head down straight back and ready to go again. So, uh, Not my captain. Uh, yeah, I've seen a co- I've seen a comment. I think it was Julie made a comment that saying the cells isn't your captain, Martin. No, I, mean, um, I have no time for him whatsoever. I'm sorry. Interesting comment here from the Tune Review fan club. I didn't know there was one. Um, <laughs> all hail St. Ditchburn and the Loaded Consortium. Well, there you go. The Loaded Consortium. Hey. Love that. The Loaded Consortium. The Loaded there you Consortium. Go. Yeah. I'll tell you. Listen, there might not be that. You know the way you guys are getting sponsors in now. You never know, right? You, you just all take never off know. all of a sudden. You know what it is. Um, <laughs> Avon, Avon, are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris, I feel for you, mate. I feel for you. I really do. It's, Paul, it's, it's all the time, mate. It's all the time. Yeah. Hey, actually, you know what would be cool? You know what would be cool, actually? 
Sports Direct signs come down, Avon signs go up. How perfect would that be? <laughs> oh, Chris I would Holmes, laugh. Just, just, in a, just in a little part of the ground, just a photo of Chris with his thumb up like that, saying Chris Hall, sponsored by Avon. <laughs> we, could just get, we could just get Chris walking around the pitch with his cream suit on and his brown crocodile look. <laughs> half time with him, half one of them um, Bro, cinnamon trays out. over his shoulder selling Avon. Throwing out lip balms and face creams out of like a, out of them a, everywhere. a wicker basket. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. That's a sight, I tell you. There's your next Halloween costume. You, Chris, you have to do it. You have to do it. Um, oh, he's frozen with the thought of it. Oh, oh, he's, he's back, he's back, he's back. Um, <laughs> right, we may as well end on um, predictions for the weekend because, um, like I say, uh, the, the two lads on the bottom have been streaming for hours, you know, they've been going like John Sinclair tonight. So, um, looking to, Chris looks absolutely knackered to be fair, he looks like he's going to fall asleep any second. Um, it's just he's, green. He's, I know you'll, you'll, need, you'll need to get that night cream on there tonight, Chris. For those eyes, you, you don't want to end oh, up mate. with uh, you don't want to end up with beef burgers under your eyes, mate. That would be. <laughs> He's gonna come off this and go. How do I shake this Avon thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never. Listen, I haven't been able to shake six pound ten for toll booth at, on the M6. <laughs> Nothing is ever shook on here at all. Uh, you can guarantee it. Um, so. Uh, Chris, we'll start with you about a score. I mean, give us a score. What formation do you think he'll play? Um, I think he'll play 4-4-1-1. I want him to play 4-2-3-1. Um, and the score I'm going to say is I'm going to go for Stu Penman. I'm going to say 3-1 Newcastle. Nice. I, 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 I'm happy with that. I'd be very happy with that, to be honest. I've forgotten yeah. what it feels like to go to St. James's and see a win. I, yeah. I'm sick of coming out of St. James is needing bloody uh, see a doctor about depression. Honestly, it's it's like you go in all hyped up and then you come out with your head down and nobody yeah. speaks to you. And it's just like, oh, bloody hell. Go on then, Pete. Um, yeah, I think we're going to see our first win. Um, I think we'll win 2-0. Um, I think it'll be a great occasion. And if I'm right in thinking... War flags are, are planning something for the for the game again. Yeah, um, they're in uh, St James's tonight setting up. Yeah, so um, yeah, I think it'll be another another spectacle, another great atmosphere. Hopefully, lasts for longer than six minutes, as Chris said earlier. Uh, but I think we'll win two nil. Um, and um, the Eddie Howe's Saudi mags will be on the on the march. You just know that the, the Eddie Howe is going to get his name chanted very, very early on, don't you? Like Eddie oh. Howe's Black White Army or something like that. They're going to get right behind him because he's just made that kind of impression on us, hasn't he? Um, yeah. Just before we come to Martin for a prediction, um, Paul's asking what the hell has happened to Santi Munoz? Uh, not seen or heard of since he came. I've seen him at one under 23s game where he was just watching from the stands, so I've never seen him since. He hasn't played at all, has he? Nah, not that once. Was That's weird. Climatizing to to moving into Europe. Or is he moving to Europe? Does he is he getting homesick? Is he, you know, do you need to get used to living in the area? He might still be training every day, but he might just not be kind of ready to to sort of play. It's, it's a different style of football, isn't it? Yeah, not just yeah, a different yeah. climate, but a different style of football. He might just need a little bit of time. Or it was just one giant publicity stunt. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. you know, I, I kind of get that out of my head that it, that's what they were doing. I, I I don't know. I don't know. No, I think I, I think maybe maybe the second half of the season he, he'll get a run in. The, It'd be nice. Reason. It'd be nice to see him. Uh, Ab says uh, break a leg, Paul. Thanks very much, Ab. <laughs> Love you too. Um, Chesri says Paul hates big words like epic and the. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Love you so <laughs> Honestly, I, honestly, some of my viewers have serious sarcastic problems. The real thing. Um, <laughs> I'm getting honestly. There's so many six pound tens. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Just uh, Billy, good evening. Uh, San Marino have the worst kit ever. Looks like it was designed by Andreas oh. Bocelli. Jesus oh, Christ, Jesus. Billy man. Um, it was horrible. We all know who. We all know it's John who fills ladies' stockings. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Carl says Avon calling. Ah, uh, yeah. Ding dong. Yeah. Um, and Carl says, uh, are you in the Gallagher Saturday, Chris? And is my order ready? <laughs> that's gotta be the, that's gotta be the chant that goes up at St. James's wherever Chris is. If somebody could just start singing Avon, Avon, that would be deadly. <laughs> just see him, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but the Anybody least, that's at the, the match on Saturday, when you see Chris, please ask him about Avon. Oh, he 
even if Friday night, Google, oh. when people have had a few beverages, uh, I mean, somebody will start chanting. I mean, I, uh, it, it probably won't be me, Chris, but somebody will start chanting um, Avon Chris or something like that. It'll be Richie. Richie. Yeah. Uh, Richie probably yeah. Off. Possibly. Yeah. Um, where was it? Uh, Thomas says, uh, Paul, the new direction you're taking the channel is viewers coming on and giving their opinions a part of it. I already do that on a Tuesday night at half past eight. Um, I bring everybody on to have their say as well. So um, I believe you guys do that as well on a Tuesday night a bit earlier. Uh, yeah, every 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 now and again, yeah. If we have something topical, we want to bring people on to talk about. So, yeah, uh, we, uh, it's called Live Line, our, our version. It's crazy, isn't it, how people have totally different different. fan forums. Totally it's different. Mental. It's mental. I mean, there's Steve Wraith going call his calling his fans for him. You know, just incredible that one, guys. Just just out the blue. <laughs> then John Sinclair, he did one and he called it the video chat. Uh, I mean, look at that. Oh, oh. Video chat, interesting. <laughs> and then Jason started one straight after the game, and I think he called it the the, the IT telephone call, phone in something. Um, <laughs> it, 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 just Touchy. incredible, really. Um, Morgul, good evening. Uh, Avon was cool in Blake 7. There you I go. Don't know what Blake 7 is. I do. I, I remember 7. it. Oh, it was like a sci fi program. It was actually a pretty oh, cool program. Yes. Yeah, I think it to was. Uh, Scotland apparently won 2 0 as well tonight. Um, Billy, you yeah. must be sarcastic because you've never said one good thing about Scotland. <clears throat> yeah, so they, they beat Denmark 2 0. I know that that's a fantastic result, result for them. Great result. That means um, they're seeded now. That means they're seeded in the playoff draw. They are, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Go Chee Adams. Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. Boy. Love it. Uh, John says, I never asked his super message questions. That's probably because the, the, the I didn't see it, mate, because the, the, uh, the comments jumped on here. It, um, was there something about a spanner? He, he, John wanted to know how you get the icon of a spanner, but I imagine you changed the badges in the uh, membership, and that's how you he, he can get a spanner. Ah, no, okay. I have no idea. I didn't see what the it must have jumped because I, I didn't see a super chat either. So thank you very much for that, John, as well. Um, very very kind. Um, right, go on, the Martin. Let's have it. Let's have your feelings for the for the match on Saturday. Yeah, no, I think I agree with the lads. I think we get a win. <clears throat> I think uh, hopefully the, the hype and the euphoria carries through for a full 90 minutes. Um, I'm going to go 2-1. I think it'll be a little little bit tighter, um, but I think we'll win 2-1. I think Wilson will score, and I think <clears throat> Ivan Tony will score for them. Yeah, yeah, well, you can just see that. You can put your money on he, that he, one, he's yeah. gonna He's going to be well revved up for the game. Yeah. Uh, undoubtedly, um, Gary says, uh, Has Chris got to travel to Somerset and Avon? <laughs> Get out. Uh, he's getting hammered. Uh, uh, Paul, did you trip over the six pound ten? Jesus Christ <laughs> almighty. Look at this, Paul, you dropped your six pound ten. <laughs> Just constant, it, it's absolute constant. Nobody's bothered that my right wrist is now ten times the size of my left one, <laughs> so there's a serious problem there. Um, but you know, whatever. Paul. On yes. the on the super chat option, you know when like people donate, is there an option to donate six pound ten, or can you not do? Oh, that? I've had I've had loads, mate, loads. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was class. Love it. When it first happened, um, you know, I had uh, I think it was on the fan forum, and Adam Pearson came with us to the. He came in the car with us down to Wolves, and then obviously he put on a recording. Uh, because I was going absolutely ballistic when I pulled away from the cold booth, right? It, it just completely ripped me off. It, it wasn't just the amount that took off, it was the way that took me card into the machine. It literally ripped it out of my hands. Um, and then they gave us it back, and then it said, thank you, £6.10. And I was going ballistic, not thinking that Adam was videoing us. So he put it on oh. Twitter. So everybody saw that I was going ballistic about £6.10. So, of course... Next live show I did, I think it was the fan forum. Uh, I saw these super chats coming in for six pound ten, and I've never lived it down. Um, but the worst thing is, I also got a speeding ticket come back from Wolves as well. So oh, no <laughs> way. I just made it all um, right, Daz. Yeah, I think yeah, the I think you go four four or one one, and I, I think it's going to be two nil as well. I'm going for a Wilson brace. Um, yeah, I, I can see Brentford. It, we, we go one nil up, then Brentford will go for it, and then we'll be able to get a second goal. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm surprised Martin's gone for a win. I'm delighted because Martin Martin normally has us down for uh, a defeat. So it's looking positive, people. Yeah, I'm going three nil. I'm going three nil, and it absolutely yeah. bust them open. Just, just, I'm, I'm just thinking anyhow. Full time whistle. He just turned. He just, he just. 
thanks all the fans. We're going ballistic. It's 3 0, first win. And, it, and it'll be feeling like we've won the Champions League or something, you know, and we've only got three <laughs> points. But that's how that it wouldn't. feels. I can't, you know, it's that long since we've won. Yeah. Uh, I'd have been setting uh, that up a different way if I was Eddie Howe and he wins that game. I'm getting some fucker to bring me on a bacon sandwich right in the middle of the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not just bring on a pig, slaughter it in the centre circle <laughs> yeah. and have a massive big sort of barbecue? You yeah, know what I mean? Just bring the fans on. Or why not? Yeah, Irish Tudor Army says Avon made the San Marino kit. Did you have anything to do with that, Chris? I didn't know. No, I haven't even seen the kit, but I'll have to. Uh, Is Avon still a thing? Don't know, Chris, is it? Well, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Rachel apparently is still waiting for a mascara. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) Rachel, it's okay. We'll keep an eye out for it. Oh, Maybe we should clarify oh, how this oh, hey, crack it. Uh, Billy has already chucked my Danish bacon out, Paul. I'm disgusted. Yeah, he's not happy the Scots have won. That's a f- certainly. Um, oh, Paul's match rate is 6.10. Ah, oh, you're funny. Right, I'm going to end it there. We've got loads of comments coming in, but they're mainly just talking about uh, £6.10 and Avon. Um, but listen, <laughs> there you go. Paul's here on £6.10. £6. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, Listen, thanks, guys, for coming on tonight. I, I know it was a bit of a dodgy start, but hey-ho. Um, I, I, sometimes I can't help falling down the stairs and I can't help knocking my camera off the table, smashing it all over the place. But uh, it's been fantastic to have you on. And um, obviously, going forward, there's going to be some great things on the show. You know, we'll start doing sort of little competitions and quizzes. And obviously, uh, your guys' interaction as well, all the viewers, you know, coming in with your jokes, you know, especially in the Chris. Exactly. I think it's hilarious Medis. rather than me. Um, it makes a difference that I'm not getting all the crap. Um, but please do try and fire some at Daz next week. You know, obviously yeah, we're on bring their it on, channel. Bring it on. Um, but Mr. Love Island is sitting there. Just uh, he's got to wish Scott free tonight, so I think uh, he needs Mr. something targeted at him. But uh, we'll try and find out something about him that we can uh, maybe some secrets from from Irish Daz. You know, to, to try and get. Uh, yeah, Craig says uh, for the competition winner, they should win an Avon hamper. Uh, Not a bad idea. <laughs> so sort that out. Chris, uh, but listen, he's on it. <laughs> Just, just Paul, before you, before we wrap up, just to let people. Yeah, know. hang on, I'm going to put it up on the screen because I know what you're going to say. Go no, I, what I was going to say is that just let people win, know that we're going to be unloaded next week. So tune yes. in on, on the lo- on the loaded channel next week. But yeah, and yeah, if 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 you like what you see, if you haven't seen us yet, uh, go to youtube.com forward slash c forward slash loaded hq. You'll find us there. You'll find all our back catalog of shows. And a mix, a mixed bag of everything, really. Uh, even you can even go back and watch the uh, the load of football weekly shows we did from a long time ago. But uh, and that's that's where the Avon thing actually really began. Maybe we should dig that out and find yeah, that first do. show. But can you um, do some kind of a zebra clip with that kind of in there, oh, Dad, with your. Oh, no, I can, no, I'm sure you can do some kind of a tune along with Avon dropped in the middle of it somewhere. Listen, Dad, you know you don't piece. have to put you, you know you don't have to put the C in, you know on your on your. You, oh, I you can just yeah, you can just I just there's a C on mine, but if you just go YouTube forward slash the tune review, it brings your channel up. I don't know whether oh. it's it, it's some kind of thing that YouTube do. I think on their web addresses and things like that. But if you just put yeah. YouTube.com I, forward slash loaded cool. whatever it is, probably because we altered there. it altered it to make it memorable and yeah, I did that we'll when get, I got we'll drop the C. Cool. Yeah, you can <laughs> drop it, drop it like a bombshell. Um, but uh, if you have enjoyed the show tonight, please don't forget to hit the like button. We've had nearly 300 watching tonight at the top, so it was really, really good. Um, lots of viewings, but uh, lots more coming on this show without a shadow of a doubt. It's interesting to see what uh, what it'll be like on the Loaded channel next week. Um, obviously, I think Daz will be hosting that, is he? Seeing as he just puts up his strange backgrounds that, and things like that. Whoever, it's a mixture. We, we, all, we, all, uh, we all chip in. Yeah. Cool. We all chip in. Right. Uh, but if you have enjoyed it tonight, don't forget to smash the like button. And if you haven't already and you've enjoyed what you've seen, you've had a look around the channel, uh, don't forget to subscribe or consider subscribing. And also uh, the description for the Loaded Guys is down in uh, the comments. Go and give them a subscription as well. And as you'll find out, they're a fantastic channel. Great bunch of lads. Good laugh, as you've seen tonight. Uh, so go and give them a follow and get their subscribers up because it's as well. Cheers, right, man. that's Thanks it for the night. Cheers, You're very welcome. Anytime. Uh, hopefully this show is going to roll on and week after week and get better and better. Um, I'm a way to fix my camera and I'm a way to sort of try and put the bones back together in my wrist and my shoulder. Um, <laughs> but take it easy, guys. Uh, Peter, How? Chris, I'll see you guys at the weekend. Looking forward yeah. to uh, meeting up with you. Top see you on Friday night. Uh, 
You Irish boys, take care out there. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon, guys. Good night, Good lads. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.